Hi, my name is Ken Peterson and I sing second tenor in the choir. And I've been in the choir since 1964 in October. So we're coming up on the 57th anniversary of that, of that date. Well, certainly it wasn't too long after I started singing and, and the choir had been on the radio for a couple of years uh, before I joined. The influx of people that happened around 1967, and it was quite a heady time. There were, you know, I was that generation of uh, what we called the hippies back then, uh, even though I was going to college and pretty serious about studying music and my head in the books about music history and so forth. And uh, I just got asked to sing in Compline just after I started my freshman year uh, down at the University of Puget Sound in Tacoma. Well, actually one of the big highlights for me was um, when the organ was installed here at St. Mark's and the fellow who got me started in Compline, he and I came up in his uh, little Volkswagen Beetle uh, and the, all the pipes were laying on the floor of the cathedral. We went around and blowing all the wood pipes and just having a another highlight, of course, I guess, would be you know the dedicatory concerts of the organ, and uh, and then after Compline, the informal uh, times when people would just come up and say, "Can I play?" And that's when I met mm -hmm. Roger Sherman, who was just a 16-year-old kid then, and uh, he now has this program called the Organ Loft, which evolved out of that whole organ after Compline tradition. Uh, Peter. Hal, I can think of many occasions where we premiered pieces by him and uh, were in various concerts besides Compline. We did a 1997 trip to Russia, uh, Finland, and uh, Sweden, and Denmark. And uh, that was, we spent a whole week in St. Petersburg and I guess one of the high points would but, be um, when we, we walked over to this cemetery where are the graves of Tchaikovsky and Mazorsky and uh, Rimsky-Korsakov and uh, you know just all the major Russian composers and we we sang the Kentuckian for the departed uh, in that cemetery and you know once again another high point would be Peter Halleck's funeral where we we did the same thing as they were putting the ashes into the little niche that we watch every uh, Sunday night in the pillar right by Compline. Would be our, our two trips that we made to England, and uh, one in 2000 and one in 2019. 2000. Yes, right. yeah. Yeah, the purpose was to kind of celebrate his um, 50th anniversary from being in the Royal School of Mu Church Music at Canterbury. And uh, so we, it was quite a different trip than our 2019 trip, so I'm happy to be, have been on both kinds yeah. of trips. One, the well, it's one been interesting because the, the pandemic is really something that uh, will always stand out in everyone's memory. And well, I think if uh, one thing that it taught me, because I'm, you know, I am getting along in years, that um, uh, eventually I'll have to let go of of such things as uh, you know, singing in groups and so forth, and uh, so it was a good kind of a a chance for me to meditate on that. But yeah, um, well, I'm I'm all for it. Uh, I got up just like a lot of the people did in Canterbury at 5:30 in the morning just to listen to it, and I was in tears. It was so, so beautiful, uh, and. Uh, it was, it was just a lovely thing that has happened here um, to involve uh, women. It's not the first time that women have sung and at Compline. There were two occasions so. where we did the Talus 40-part motet as the anthem at Compline. And that certainly has to be one of the highlights for me, especially the one in 1981, which I directed and organized. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Spiminolium? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 40 part motet. And then uh, uh, in 1991, we repeated that for Peter's 40th anniversary at St. Mark's. Uh, 
Yeah, I'd just like to see the attitude continue, the hospitality, the welcome that we have for people coming to hear us, that technological advances have been so great. I mean, it's just been recently that we are doing live streams. That technology is so wonderful. Here's another memory I had right after 9-11, singing such, well, typically Compline uh, material as Psalm 91, I will not fear the terror by night, but place yourself in that kind of thing, and, and I, would, I would be singing Compline, I think, well, what this is about is no matter what happens, uh, we are in the hands of God, and that will not change. Yeah. And Compline, I mean, we've been increasingly responsive to praying for people during the service. That has been a change in the way things uh, is, uh, and our response to the Orlando shootings in particular, when we all, you know, lit candles and and had a special liturgy as part of Compline. That kind of flexibility, I think, uh, keeps Compline really alive, you know.